question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. The reason for this unawareness of the frightening danger to our country and to the entire free world is simple. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. We all know that our State Department, the Pentagon, and the White House have brazenly proclaimed that they have the right and the power to manage the news, to tell us not the truth, but what they want us to believe. They have seized that power on orders from their masters of the great conspiracy. And the objective is to brainwash the people into accepting the phony peace bait to transform the United States into an enslaved unit of the United Nations One World Government is that our so-called leaders in Washington, whom we elected to safeguard our nation and our Constitution, are the betrayers, and that behind them are a comparatively small group of men whose sole objective is to enslave the whole world of humanity in their satanic plot of One World Government. Now, as a matter of further intelligence, a term used by the FBI, let me clarify the meaning of the expression, he is a liberal. The enemy, meaning the one world conspirators, have seized upon that word liberal as a cover up for their activities. It sounds so innocent and so humanitarian to be liberal will make sure that the person who calls himself a liberal or is described as a liberal is not in truth a red. Now then, this satanic plot was launched back in the 1760s when it first came into existence under the name of the Illuminati. This Illuminati was organized by one Adam Weishaupt born a Jew who was converted to Catholicism and became a Catholic priest. And then, at the behest of the then newly organized House of Rothschild, defected and organized the Illuminati. Naturally, the Rothschilds financed that operation. And every war since then, beginning with the French Revolution, has been promoted by the Illuminati operating under various names and guises. In the United States, they set up what they called the Council on Foreign Relations, commonly referred to as the CFR. And this CFR is actually the Illuminati in the United States. And its hierarchy, the masterminds in control of the CFR, to a very great extent are the descendants of the original Illuminati conspirators. But to conceal that fact, most of them changed their original family names to American sounding names. For example, the true name of the Dillons, Clarence and Douglas Dillon, once secretary of the US Treasury Department, is Lepowski. There is a similar establishment of the Illuminati in England, operating under the name of the British Institute of International Affairs. There are similar secret Illuminati organizations in France, Germany, and other nations, operating under different names. But at all times, the operations of these organizations were and are masterminded and controlled by the internationalist bankers who in turn were and are controlled by the Rothschilds. 
Now, just why did the conspirators choose the word Illuminati for their satanic organization? Weishaupt himself said that the word is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light. Using the lie that his objective was to bring about a one world government to enable those with mental ability to govern the world and prevent all wars in the future. In short, using the word peace on earth as his bait, perhaps the most vital directive in Weishaupt's plan was to obtain absolute control of the press so that all news and information could be slanted so that the masses could be convinced that a one world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. Now do you know who owns and controls our mass communications media? I'll tell you, practically all the movie lots in Hollywood is owned by the Laymans, Kuhn Loeb and Company, Goldman Sachs, and other internationalist bankers. All the national radio and TV channels in the nation are owned and controlled by those same internationalist bankers. In 1834, the Italian revolutionary leader, Giuseppe Mazzini, was selected by the Illuminati to direct their revolutionary program throughout the world. Mazzini had enticed an American general named Albert Pike into the Illuminati. Pike was fascinated by the idea of a one world government, and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy. Between 1859 and 1871, he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, which he considered would forward the conspiracy to its final stage in the 20th century. Long before Marconi invented radio, the scientists in the Illuminati had found the means for Pike and the heads of his councils to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of that secret that enabled intelligence officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents, one such as the assassination of an Austrian prince at Sarajevo, took place simultaneously throughout the world, which developed into a war or a revolution. Pike's plan was as simple as it has proved effective. It called for communism, Nazism, political Zionism, and other international movements be organized and used to foment three global world wars and at least two major revolutions. World War III is to be fomented by using the so-called controversies, the agents of the Illuminati, operating under whatever new name, are now stirring up between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. That war is to be directed in such a manner that all of Islam and political Zionism, Israel, will destroy each other, while at the same time, the remaining nations, once more divided on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion, physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Now, can any thinking person doubt that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east is designed to accomplish that satanic objective? Pike himself foretold all this in a statement he made to Mazzini on August 15, 1871. Pike stated that after World War III is ended, those who will inspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. Quoting his own words, taken from the letter he wrote to Mazzini, and which letter is now catalogued in the British Museum in London, England, he said, we shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations 
the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery and of most bloody turmoil, then everywhere the people forced to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitudes disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will be from that moment on without direction and leadership and anxious for an ideal but without knowledge where to send its adoration will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out into public view a manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Anyway, the ending of the Civil War destroyed, temporarily, all chances of the House of Rothschild to get a clutch on our money system, such as they had acquired in Britain and other nations in Europe. I say temporarily because the Rothschilds and the masterminds of the conspiracy never quit. So they had to start from scratch but they lost no time in getting started. Shortly after the Civil War, a young immigrant who called himself Jacob H. Schiff arrived in New York. Jacob was a young man with a mission for the House of Rothschild. Jacob was the son of a rabbi born in one of Rothschild's houses in Frankfurt, Germany. After a comparatively brief training period in the Rothschild's London Bank, Jacob left for America with instructions to buy into a banking house which was to be the springboard to acquire control of the money system of the United States. Actually, Jacob came here to carry out four specific assignments. Number one, and most important, was to acquire control of America's money system. Number two, find desirable men who, for a price, would be willing to serve as stooges for the great conspiracy and promote them into high places in our federal government, our Congress, in the U.S. Supreme Court, and all federal agencies. Number three, create minority group strife throughout the nations, particularly between whites and blacks. Number four, create a movement to destroy religion in the United States, but Christianity to be the chief target. In the final phases of the conspiracy, the one world government will consist of the king dictator, head of the United Nations, the CFR, and a few billionaires, economists, and scientists who have proved their devotion to the great conspiracy. All others are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity, actually slaves. The name United Nations was coined by United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt and was used in the declaration by United Nations of January 1942, during the Second World War, when representatives of 26 nations pledged their governments to continue fighting together against what they called the Axis powers. So it officially came into existence on the 24th of October 1945, when the Charter was ratified by China, France, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, United States, and by a majority of the other signatories and every 24th of October they celebrate this founding of the United Nations. Alga Hiss, he became the acting Secretary General of the establishment of the United Nations. The April 16, 1945 issue of Time magazine called him one of the State Department's brighter young men. It was his and Joseph E. Johnson who later became secretary of the Bilderbergers. So here we have all the secret societies again. 
who wrote much of the United Nations Charter. So very high Freemasons, Bilderbergers, were responsible for this charter. Patterning it after the Constitution of Russia and the Communist Manifesto. So the Constitution of the USSR is almost identical to the Constitution of the United Nations, for those who did not know that. Winston Churchill, the creation of an authoritative world order is the ultimate aim to watch which we must strive, and the United Nations formed part of that. Charles de Gaulle, who was also instrumental, nations must unite in a world government or perish. So the big figures involved had this philosophy. Then there is a man, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Trigger Lee. The first official UN Secretary General was a high-ranking member of Norway's Social Democratic Party, which was, by the way, an offshoot of the Third Communist International. And then came a man, Doug Hammarskjöld. And he was the second Secretary General. He was a Swedish Socialist. He openly pushed communist policy. He was the Secretary General of the United Nations from 10 April 1953 to 1961. Then he met his death in a plane crash. Now, what did he do in the United Nations? Well, one of the first things he did was to produce or create a prayer room. And there it is on the left-hand side. Uh, a stone in the middle of the room was placed to tell us we may see it as an altar, empty, not because there is no God, not because it is an altar to an unknown God, but because it is dedicated to the God who man worships under many names and many forms. The meditation room is shaped as a pyramid, a trapezoid. The meditation room faces north, northeast. To enter the room, one must proceed from darkness into light. Indeed, the middle order of the Satanic Brotherhood is called the Order of the Trapezoid. And Anton LaVey, who is the founder of the Church of Satan, refers to an occult principle known as the Law of the Trapezoid. So we seem to have a very occult room here. And then came Utant, the third secretary general, and he was a Marxist. So here you can see how the philosophy in the beginning was programmed. The New Age agenda was to merge God and nature. That's what Tyler de Chardin, the father of the philosophy of the UN, said. We must become pantheistic, eradicate male-female distinction, world peace, nuclear disarmament, one world government, one world religion. The organizations leading up to this, the United Nations, of course, Council of Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, Bilderbergers, Gorbachev Foundation, and the Club of Rome. And they've already put up a constitution which is known as the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. The former director of the World Health Organization, Dr. Brock Chisholm, of course, that's also a United Nations organization, says, to achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family traditions, national patriotism and religion's dogmas. Your individualism must go, you must become a number. This is Marxism. The state is supreme and you are nothing but the catechumen, a goyim, a nothing. UNESCO, it's a sub-organization of the United Nations. Julian Huxley is the former director of UNESCO. He was Humanist of the Year. He's a theistic philosopher, member of the Communistic Colonial Bureau of British Fabian Society, and signer of the Humanist Manifesto too. Niebuhr is UNESCO's co-founder, and he signed SIECOS. What is SIECOS? This is, these are the founders. It is the position of SIECOS that contraceptive services should be available to all, including minors, who should enjoy the same rights of free and independent access to contraceptive care as do others. It is the position of SIECOS that the use of explicit sexual materials, sometimes referred to as pornography, can serve a variety of important needs in the lives of countless individuals. Under Huxley's guidance, they prepared a guide for teachers. Now, I would like the parents to take a note. 
What is the United Nations guidebook for teachers? In the classroom with children under 13 years of age, before the child enters school, his mind has already been profoundly marked, often injuriously by earlier influences, first gained, however dimly, in the home. So UNESCO's aim is to change the mindset of your children, to turn it against any values that the parents might instill in the mind of that child. On page 8, the teacher is told, the kindergarten or infant school has a significant part to play in the child's education. Now we have sex ed in kindergarten. This week, hundreds of outraged parents showed up at a school board meeting in Elena, Montana, carrying signs upset about the school district's plans for a new sex ed curriculum. Again, starting with kids as young as five, teaching them about body parts, proper terms. Here's a few of them. Penis, vagina, nipples, testicles. For a five-year-old, and you move on to first grade, taught about same-sex love. Fifth grade, options for sex, including anal penetration. That's a 10-year-old. Guess when kids go to school in England? Age three. And on the phone, a parent in the district, Brian Ackerman has three young daughters. What, a first grader, third grader? You're going to have a kindergarten next year. Uh, Brian, your reaction to think that your little girls might be taught this, especially uh, your youngest, who's going to be a kindergartner soon? You know, right now my reaction, Mike, is the, uh, I guess it's the, the lack of somebody that stepped up and said the age appropriateness of this has been established by X, <clears throat> and X's qualifications are. More so right now it seems that the material has been introduced and the people that brought the curriculum together as a group decided, well, at this point it's age appropriate, and we really haven't seen where that age appropriateness comes from, you know, who... What's the impetus? What's the driving factor? What's, who decides this? When do they decide it? And how do they decide it? Right. Uh, well, let's ask Dr. Bruce Messinger. Uh, Bruce, that seems to be a big question here. Who's deciding age appropriateness? Did you have parents involved as you were putting together this curriculum? Our process was that uh, as a part of the uh, revamping of the curriculum is that we uh, looked at what we had in place presently, looked at our practices within the district, then we also looked at national guidelines, national health standards, mm -hmm. looked at uh, the guidelines for sexual education, which were developed by a diverse set of organizations, and also uh, looked at the American Academy of Pediatrics advice they would give on what would be age or developmentally appropriate to be introduced to children at different stages from elementary through middle school and high school. So we okay. took guidance from that, uh, as well as committee members that were pretty representative. Some included parents, yes. Okay, Brian, there was the answer for you. A lot of different sources. Is that good enough for you or uh, not specific enough? Right now it's not specific enough. Okay. I'm, I, w I would like to see someone at, at some point step up and say, this is the group that established it. What about these world religions? Now, this is the crux of the matter. Now, this is a very interesting man, Robert Miller. He's the former Assistant Secretary General to the United Nations. He wrote, we must move as quickly as possible to a one world government, a one world religion, under a one world leader. Robert Miller writes, the underlying philosophy upon which the Robert Miller School is based will be found in the teachings set forth in the books of Alice A. Bailey. So the philosophy is based on Luciferian channeled writings preparing for the coming of Lucifer. No human force will ever be able to destroy the United Nations. For the United Nations is not a mere building or a mere idea. It is not a man-made creation. This is Robert Miller speaking, former Under Secretary General of the United Nations. If it wasn't man made, then who made it? At his choice hour, the Absolute Supreme will ring his own victory bell here on earth through the loving and serving heart of the United Nations. Uh, celebration of the International Year of Light 2015 and here is a very symbolic symbol of this light in the form of a snake going around her arm and they refer to that as a hug 
from our oldest friend because that is a direct reference to Lucifer giving intellect to Eve in the Garden of Eden uh, and they're calling him an old friend and there's some uh, iconography of Lucifer the snake deceiving Eve and giving her the uh, knowledge of good and evil We turn our attention back to the unraveling situation in Haiti. Last Friday, at approximately 3 in the morning, 400 Brazilian-led United Nations occupation troops in armored vehicles laid siege once again to the impoverished community of Cité Soleil. Including when UN troops shot a six-month pregnant woman in the abdomen, killing her unborn child, and families were shot in their beds when helicopter gunships fired into their homes. We understand that more than 350 troops uh, went into the seaside shanty town at 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, they went in shooting, firing heavy caliber. Um, we heard that M50s were being fired from helicopter gunships down at the community. Total mayhem. Young children, uh, pregnant women uh, being killed, gunned down by the United Nations. The UN has said that there were no non-combatants who were killed during that raid, that they only fired, uh, returned fire after being fired upon. What you see are unarmed civilians who are victims of headshots. Headshots, of course, are meant to kill. The unarmed civilians that we see bleeding to death in this footage are clearly unarmed. But remember, with the way in which these massacres are similar to 2005, is that when the United Nations goes into this community, they don't bring medical units. Why? Because they are not going in to injure people. The United Nations is going in to kill people, and as you said, this is collective punishment. It is retribution for their holding out and resisting what they call, and what they consider, a United Nations military occupation of their country. Here's the way they look at it. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. Wake up.